What's up guys, Ryan from Manscapes. In today's video, we have got the Exoterra build, the River Creek. I tried to mimic, you know, as you're walking through the woods, that sort of thing. You see a fallen tree over and you only see that creek coming out the other side of the river. But anyway, um, you'll see the vision as I'm doing it. I normally get a lot of my um, inspiration from outside, outdoors, going on walks and things that you see. So I probably have seen something like this, you know, on, on a walk. And that's what I tried to mirror. I was happy with the build. There was also a lot of mistakes that I made during this build. So, you know, hopefully if you guys are making one, you can learn from my mistakes. Um, but either way, I was really, really happy with the end result. I still don't know what I'm going to keep in there. So just remember that, you know, in about a month's time, I'll be updating this video with what I ended up buying for it uh, and putting in there. But as always from me, peace and love. I'm out. Okay, so the first thing was just making that little cutout area for the waterfall or the stream creek running through. I have used these bars in other builds like my mountain paludarium. I also made them on my uh, sort of mini waterfalls one that I had or made recently. I will try and tag those up in the corners th uh, throughout the video because I will have to sort of spread them out. But essentially all I did was put stainless steel mesh on the insides of those so that the water come through. That was the first mistake I made. I didn't do it on all four sides and I didn't make it big enough or um, you know wide enough. I added this very fine foam as well so it didn't clog the filter up when you put the filter in there. Again, another mistake because um, I should have used um, slightly wider foam and not as fine basically. So the water wasn't pulling through quick enough for it to load. So essentially as the water was pulling through on top of the creek, it was actually sitting on the top of that river area or the sand and not draining through into that box quick enough for the water to pump it through. So I did have to make that again. Now this is just me getting an idea for, you know, what I want the, it to look like, the scale. But you can see there roughly how the river uh, sort of creek looks at the moment. I was really happy with it, but you know, I do end up changing the whole design. So I think what we'll do, we'll get straight to the background. You'll be able to see what I use for the background and sort of how that went. Um, because it does give you a better picture ultimately for how you're doing it. The first thing you want to do is get your expanding foam. Wear a mask and the gloves that you get with these as well if you do have them because honestly getting it on your hands is an absolute nightmare. Like believe me, it's it's awful. <laughs> so make sure you, um, but yeah, just, just make sure you wear the gloves. And what I was doing here is I was just checking on it every, you know, 20, 30 minutes or so, making sure it wasn't expanding out onto the carpet. <laughs> because that would have been a nightmare as well. And where the doors were, I opened the doors just to make sure that I didn't end up sealing the doors. Regardless, when this, when, uh, when this stuff does dry completely and cure, it is so, so easy to get rid of it from any surface. Uh, it does literally just raise a scrape straight off. So if you do get it anywhere, don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be perfect straight away. The only thing I would advise is when you're doing this, maybe use after an hour or two, when it's more set, put some weights on it. So it definitely adheres to the glass properly. At this point, you can see it's not stuck in all areas. So what I did, I put weights on and I just went over to test my water, uh, water section, sorry. See how that runs, um, that sort of thing. At this point, it's not sealed in. So some will be running down back into that hole. But at this point, you know, for me, it was a great idea or, you know, sense of idea on how the river's going to run, where I can put rocks to divert the flow, etc, etc. But this is just sort of water testing anyway. Once you've formed it all in, you put the cork pieces on, that sort of thing. What I did do is carve it out and, and that was about it really. Just carve it out, make sure all the shiny bits are gone. It's only foam, you can see. It kind of looks like a sponge as opposed to shiny. Um, make sure it is all gone because you won't um, get the silicon seal to adhere to it, um, you know, as good as it would if it wasn't. It doesn't stick properly. So make sure you put all, all of that foam enough so it looks like a sponge. All I'm doing here is pointing out where I'm keeping the filter or where the filter will run. It does go straight up to the tubing system onto a T-bar. The T-bar goes onto the river area. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> the River Creek area. And then the uh, bar at the top essentially is like a rainfall. But all I'm doing here is um, putting loads of silicon on, rubbing it in with my fingers and then adding cocoa fiber straight to the top of that. What it then does is it sticks that surface. Uh, just make sure it's everywhere. And when you do this again, make sure you've got some gloves on because um, you know 
it, it just gets everywhere it's horrible it stinks as well so if you have got a better room than you know um, an animal room like a garage or something that'd be much better and all you want to do here is just absolutely mound it full of cocoa fiber and then press it into the background I can't show you any of the other sides, but I just repeat, uh, repeated that process with every single side and that was literally it. Now all I'm doing here is adding the silicon to that River Creek area. I will be putting in fine gravel, making sure that's stuck down as well as some larger rocks to give it a more natural texture and look. At this point the edges are so rough that you know it doesn't really matter don't worry about those rough edges for now because ultimately this will have soil in it this is going to have plants in it they will hide a lot of the things that you know you potentially could see as like you know flaw like um you know, exposed uh, foam or exposed parts of the river section remember you can always create moss over things like java moss which will end, end up actually attaching to that and um, you know growing absolutely fine which at the same time will cover it up so anything like that and um, you know don't hide it the cosmetic side of it for now you know it, it's not a huge deal you can always sort that out later um, or further down the line now this is where i went wrong what i did was i added a little bit of sponging in front of those mesh and um, things going in what i should have done is made more of like a, a bank and essentially used um not as fine foam that sort of thing it all ran perfect you know the river section that top bar you can see it spraying onto the glass there at the front but what i did is once i turned it on it just completely filled the whole tank started pouring out through the cracks at the front and basically started to flood the room so i had to drain it very quickly um in panic mode but new scalpel here so the cutter is slightly slightly better and it was a much neater river system I end up actually once I've put it in, I cut it whilst it's in there. Um, you know, even though I've made the whole design because you know it's it's not a rigid process. I don't feel like when you're making these things, things do change, and ultimately, you never really always stick with the first design that you have. Um, things do end up changing, you know, as you're going along. It was the same process, four sides. Um, you know, cut them out, larger mesh membrane. Uh, pieces so the water could actually get in and drain in properly and then all I did was add that base um, in the height so the water can collect in the top creek area and run down and you'll see here obviously again you know it looks a lot nicer it's a, the cuts are a lot smarter and that's essentially how it ran um, you know so either way you will see how I cut it later on because like I said this does change quite a bit and you can see all the sponge there stuff something at the back I created more of like a bank and then I used pond liner over the top of it to create more of like a body of water below which I felt like you know did end up working really well but you can see me here just testing the pond liner putting it in and essentially once I had that set in I just silicon sealed it straight to the top of that the foam all those sorts of things and I did silicon the foam in as well um you know again this is all hidden so you don't have to worry about that sort of thing if you end up want to reuse this tank it's going to be more more of a clean up we'll say but you know it's it's more of a temporary thing uh, temporary it's more of a permanent thing because ultimately you don't make these tanks to have them for a month or two you know you you have them to hopefully you know last a couple of years that sort of thing so um just make sure you know when you when you're doing it you can hide the spots that are less appealing or cover it with moss or something like that or plants So all I'm doing here, as I've mentioned, getting a nice idea for exactly how I want it to look. All I did was silicon it all in, get everything set exactly how I wanted it because obviously in the morning, what I will be doing is adding the soil in, you know, the, the membrane, um, that sort of thing. And basically the, the final and finishing touches. Once I got this in, it was just a case of, um, you know, adding in the drainage layer and then creating that sort of river, creek, waterfall area. And that was it really. I was just getting all of the pieces into position, making sure it was all 100%, happy how I, you know, how the liner looked, that sort of thing. 
then I just filled it with water and again, you know, test ran it, make sure, made sure the water was going through into that um, chamber, um, you know, quick enough, that sort of thing. Making sure there was no dip from the back to the front, because if there was then, again, you know, I'd run into issues further down the line once the soil was in. Um, but basically all I did was fill it with water and hit the, the, hit the go switch really. Again, this does change. So at this stage as well, you know, a lot of this design ends, ends up, you know, changing completely. So um, like I say, it's not rigid. The same thing though, once I had that down, I siliconed it in, I put in some larger rocks for more detail and texture. I then, um, you know, stuck some pieces of the wood to the background front, got in the larger pieces of the hardscape at the front as well, covering that River Creek area. I end up taking them out quite a lot at some stages, you know, just to see how it looks better. And you will play around with that for quite a while. It doesn't really matter. Next thing is drainage layer. This in particular, just wash it through because the water is going to be sat. So it's going to hold the moisture. It's also really good biological filtration for the water section. Not that it needs to be because there's no fish going in there but it's always good just to have that biological filtration. It's going to help the plant in the long run and it'll just help the longevity or longevity of the tank itself. Soak in some sag uh, sphagnum moss. And the next thing is just getting the hardscape down, making sure I'm super happy with everything and um, putting it back to where I had it at first really. I'm adding the soil, creating two banks either side, but I do end up cutting this down. As I've mentioned, I ran into a problem. But by the problem, I just mean that my design changed in my head. It didn't look, it looked more like a waterfall as opposed to a runoff creek, but this did enable me to add more soil and things like that. All I do here is get the moss, attach it to this using these still steel, stainless steel um, pins. Once I've established and they're finally attached to it, then you can just take them out further down the line. This is how it looks for the moment, but as mentioned, I do change it. I'm going to cut it around here more like a little bow. I feel like it needs cutting. I'll cut that front end, uh, but you'll, you'll see the vision once I've, I've done it, but I will cut it from about here all the way down to about there. So I'd like that runoff creek. I can pile more gravel up to the top and then use them rocks to cover the hard edges. So there, you can see the vision's a little bit better now. It's kind of how I planned it in my head. Um, I think I went overboard with the cardboard cut in there. Pile of palm, just to the back right to add some height. I did buy some polka dot, uh, sorry, begonia polka dot, but it was a little bit too big. The leaves were too large, it threw the scale off slightly. Mosaic plant as well on the left there. Some dead shredded wood. I added quite a bit of shredded wood towards the back, leaves, botanicals. I'll show what I added a little bit later on. I'm just using some moss I got from Paul Talbot. Shout out to you. Um, I'm just hiding those rough edges. The great thing about that is that it will wick up and um, you know I think the moss will do really well here just because it will wick up and it will make the moss very lush green.
now it was just a case of adding those botanicals inside this. So now we'll just go through the cleanup crew. We've got some Armadillium Waneri, Armadillium Maculatum Champagne, Armadillium Maculatum Yellow, Armadillium Kluge Dubrovnik, and some native millipedes and some springtails. But all I'm doing here is adding springtails, adding in some native millipedes that I've been culturing for the last few months myself. I just think they're really cool the addition millipedes, they are, and um, you can see, see the little guy go there. But I just really, really love them. Honestly, I think they're beautiful. And remember, if you liked the video, smash that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel so you can see what I actually end up adding here in a month or so's time. Drop a comment below what you actually would like to see as well. Just let me know in the comments below. But as always from me, peace and love. I'm out.